RIEs, or reactive ion etchers, are used to etch various materials such as silicon dioxide, silicon nitride, various polymers, and various metals from the surface of a substrate using various reactive gases in a RF or radio frequency induced plasma. This RIE has two chambers. The left chamber is equipped with chlorine gases including boron trichloride, chlorine, chloroform, and silicon tetrachloride. The right chamber is equipped with argon, trifluoromethane, oxygen, and sulfur hexafluoride. The RIE can process a wide range of sample sizes. The number of samples depends on the size of the samples. A typical run can process anywhere from 1 to 4 4 inch wafers. Now, let's introduce our lab users. <laughs> We will now go over the various parts of the Plasmatherm RIE. Here we have the monitor and keyboard. Here we have the two chambers. Here we have the emergency off button. Please do not press the emergency off button if there is not an emergency. First, log into the machine. After you log in, make sure the system is in standby mode. If it is not in standby mode, press the standby button at the bottom of the screen. Highlight utilities, then highlight vent. Once the chamber is vented, lift the chamber door. Load your sample into the chamber, then close the chamber door. Once the chamber is closed, pump down the system. Please do not try to run the process if the chamber door is open. Highlight process, then choose load recipe. Choose the recipe you want to run. Then click OK. Press the ready button at the bottom of the screen. After ready parameters have been applied, press the run button at the bottom of the screen. Choose the time you want your process to run in. Then click run. Then click OK. Please do not try to open the chamber door while the system is running. After the process is over, press the standby button at the bottom of the screen. Highlight utilities, then choose vent. Once the chamber is vented, lift the chamber door. Unload the sample from the chamber. Then close the chamber door. Then pump the chamber down. After the chamber has been pumped down, highlight utilities and then log out. We are going to build a basic aluminum etch recipe. From the process menu, choose build to create a new recipe a list of the recipe steps will be displayed on the right side of the screen. In general, your recipe should have four steps. An initial step, two process steps, and an end step. 
The initial step evacuates the chamber, removing the air inside, and brings the chamber to the process temperature. All recipes will start with an initial step. This step will evacuate the chamber and bring the chamber to the desired operating temperature. Set the pressure to 40 millitor and set the time to 15 seconds. Set the pump to turbo. This will cause the system to evacuate as much air from the chamber as possible before starting the process. Do not attempt to use pressure set points below 30 millitor. The chamber will evacuate as much as possible regardless of the set point. Set the temperature to your desired process temperature. Note that the temperature is measured in degrees Celsius. You may describe your recipe in the description box. The first few words will be displayed by the file name when you are loading your recipe. To create a new step, select the step that will go before the new step and click the appropriate button for the type of step you want at the bottom of the screen. The process step dialog box has four major areas. Time, pressure, gas flow, and power. The process step is a gas purge step and it also sets the process pressure. It allows the chamber pressure and gas flows time to stabilize. You will usually want two process steps. They should be identical with a few exceptions. The pump should be set to turbo for both process steps. The first process steps terminate by time should be set to fixed time. This will be used to stabilize the chamber conditions. The time for this step is not critical, but 20 seconds is good. Set the pressure to the process pressure you want for both process steps. The process pressure is measured in millitor. Set the flow rate for each gas here. The flow rates are given in SCCM, standard cubic centimeters per minute. Leave the power set to zero in the initial step. Because the RF is off, no processing will actually take place during the step. The second process step performs the process. If you set its terminate by time to variable time, you will be prompted for the process time each time you run your recipe. This is usually more convenient than editing the recipe each time. However, you can set the process to fixed time and set the time here if you prefer. The flow rate should be the same for both process steps. Set it to the power you want for your process in the second process step. Please do not exceed 400 watts. In our case, we used 125 watts. All steps have an end step that evacuates the chamber. The pump should be set to turbo. Set the pressure to 40 millitor and set the time to 15 seconds. The automatic vent feature does not work properly and should not be used. When you modify a process, you only change the process on the disk. If the process is already loaded, you will need to reload it for your changes to be reflected. Please do not reboot the system if the software freezes. The system must be turned back on correctly to work properly. After watching this training video, you should know how to load a sample, run a recipe, unload a sample, and program a recipe. If you have any questions, please direct them to the trainer of this equipment. Please do not ask Mohammed. <laughs>